Okay, we've got Matt Porton here. Matt's the USFA's Marine Parks Liaison Officer. Also, he's the representative for the USFA to the Recreational Fishing Alliance. And Matt's the Spearfishing Representative to the Recreational Fishing Advisory Council. Matt, you hold a few positions, mate. Um, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions on the Hawkesbury Bioshelf region, in particular, Initiative 4. Let me see if I can get this right. Is spatial management for biodiversity conservation use and sharing? Is that just another name for sanctuary, mate? What do you think? Yeah, that is for sure. It's definitely all about lockouts. Uh, a lot of the other important issues such as pollution and habitat destruction, water quality, it's expensive to fix and often put in the hard, too hard basket, so they go for the easiest option, which to them is locking out the main user group in recreational line and spearfishers from these areas. Yeah, that's pretty true, mate, because look, spearrows, we're restricted, aren't we? We've got lungs that we have to hold our breath with, what, 15, 20 metres tops, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. The vast majority of spearfishing occurs in shallow coastal waters, on shallow reefs and headlands in less than 20 metres of water. What about the safety aspects, mate? Think of the kids, think of the dads, the granddads. There's four generations of spear fishermen out there now since the sports began. Where do, we, where do the young kids go if it's all locked out? Some of these key proposed sites are great places to spearfish in adverse weather conditions. Where are they going to go? Yeah, that's a major issue. If some of these headlands in particular are closed that have great protection in either a northerly or a southerly, then people are going to be forced into more exposed areas. They're going to be put at more risk. There's going to be increased dangers and there could be incidents that occur. Mate, I totally agree. And it was brought up at a recent workshop meeting that we had with MEMA. Um, once, if areas are restricted, the onflow, the spear fishermen are going to go and concentrate their effort into other headlands that haven't got any lockouts on them. Do you think that's going to have an adverse effect to the fish stocks? Of course it is. If you get a lot of spear fishers from the diving spread out area where the effort's spread out and then you concentrate into a few small areas that are left, of course it's going to have a detrimental effect. Yeah, people have to go somewhere to fish, so you better have to spare it out. Mate, and just one thing that's always uh, bugged me is that people really believe that there's overflow from sanctuaries. Um, in your experience, and I'm talking to somebody here that's been spearfishing for nigh on 30 years, you've spearfished all around Australia in reefs, you've seen a lot. Do, do you think overflow is a realistic thing in Sydney, New South Wales? Could it happen? No, I don't. I don't. I don't believe that you'll get much overflow at all. For one, fish move in and out of these sanctuary areas anyway. Plus, what often happens is you get a larger size range of fish in a protected area. So you get more bigger fish, but overall the population becomes smaller. Great. That's, I hadn't thought of it like that. Now, mate, let's just go over these three questions, um, just in a nutshell. The strengths of the initiative, like what strengths are there? They're, they're gonna, if they're gonna restrict us, they're gonna restrict us, there's no strengths, yeah? Yeah, to us there's zero strength. If you're excluding us, we don't get any benefit from it whatsoever. Okay, weaknesses to maximize the benefit? Well, what can I say? Weaknesses, well, we don't believe in the benefit. Um, and see, what changes would make this proposed initiative work? Well, uh, what changes could there be? What do we need to look at? Do we need to look at um, better fisheries management? What's adaptive management? Is that what we say? Adaptive management's a key area where if something does occur, you need it to be fixed straight away and, and to be looked at and management strategies changed to target that area. It's usually in specific population that it occurs, not wide ranging, so it might be in a specific species and then you can bring in specific bag and size limits for that species to okay. protect it. All right, fantastic. Um, and what, restocking as well as an issue we could look at? Yeah, there's been a lot of research done in restocking and it's started already. Uh, stock, restocking Mulloway and other important species has been occurring in New South Wales. All right, and look mate, the, the last thing I think I wanted to ask you about here 
um, was the big issues, pollution, runoff, habitat destruction. I recall over a year ago when MEMA uh, started to bring up the Hawkesbury Shelf bioregion, uh, there was a large percentage of the 2,800 submissions from over 6 million people that reside in this bioregion, uh, the biggest issue was pollution. It seems that pollution has been given short thrift here. Um, and there seems to be a lot of concern, well, at least judging by the paperwork involved that I'm reading, on the spatial management. Um, what, what do you think are some pollution issues here with pollution, habitat destruction and water quality? What, what do we look at? Well, I think they're the main issues and they are really going to have effect on, on fish populations. One of the things you've got at the moment is they've recently announced a proposal to pump sewage straight into the harbour when Whoa. it occurs with, with runoff from when there's a big flood event. There's too many stormwater drains plumbed into the sewer systems. When it rains, they get an overload and they've got to deal with it. So the new plan is to pump that straight into the harbour. What's the point of making lockouts outside when the problem's going to be from all this pollution running into the harbour and you're going to have the nursery areas, which are most often in estuaries, destroyed from yep. pollution, decrease in water quality, you're going to have nutrification and lots of issues like that. Okay, look, I on that, I look at Jarvis Bay Marine Park. There was a huge fish kill from pollution a couple of years ago there. Uh, there were tens of thousands of fish killed, yeah? There's been nothing done that I've seen, nothing proactive coming from the government to address this. Yet they simply find it easy to fix is to take extraction out because it, it looks as though that they can't fix pollution, industrial pollution. They're not going to be able to fix climate change slash global warming. So let's go the easy way out. Just draw a circle around this. No one can take any fish from it. Is that what you're thinking this is? Yeah, for sure. Like I think... When they look at pollution, they just say, well, it'll be way too expensive to fix that, so I'll go for the soft target. And the soft target seems to always be recreational spearfishers and line fishers, and it just makes the government look like they're doing something when they're not addressing the real problem. Yep. Matt Poulton, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.